Welcome back everyone. This video, like I said in the previous video, we were going to talk about comparison operators. But you know, I think I just decided to throw a little video in here that's going to take a step away from that just to talk about some coding best practices. I want to get this down before we move on to something else because this is where a lot of people start to break down. And I have reviewed a lot of beginner's code and the same issues always show up. So I'm not just saying this just to, to fill my video count or anything. This is legitimate stuff and a concern of mine to ensure that you develop in the best way possible. So this really has to do with the way you code, the way you type things out, and the way you structure your programs. And this is the basics, so we're not talking about huge complex programs, we're talking about how do you type out code in the proper way. And the very first thing I wanted to talk about was indentations. So indentations, like this is an indentation. When you press the tab or use like four spaces or whatever, that is an indentation. And these are really, really important to keep consistent. And when do you know when to use them and not use them? Well, the secret is that anytime we have a new code block defined by these curly braces, everything within that code block gets indented. And that's consistent. So even though we have another code block down here, this code block is within the other code block. So it also has to be indented. But this code here is in that second code block, so it gets indented once more from this code block. So hopefully that's pretty clear. I mean, it's obvious when you look at it here, but it gets really confusing when you have like 30 indents and at the end you have like 16 curly braces and you're trying to figure out where they're all supposed to go. <laughs> And you get an error like you have one too many curly brace or like something like that. And then you have to figure out what's going on and you don't want to de-scope things by uh, deleting a curly brace here, for example. We could have a print F statement like this. And what could happen is I could accidentally put an extra curly brace and delete this one because I have an error and I'm trying to fix it. And what happens is that this code is going to compile and run. So this needs to be, um, yeah, let's make this false here. Run this. And you can see that if I put, it doesn't matter what I put, it doesn't say the end, even though it's supposed to say the end all of the time. So this is just kind of like an illustration. Um, kind of, kind of got a little off topic, but the point is that make sure you follow your indentations. And the easiest way to do that is to do it before you have issues. So if you know you're going to be doing an if statement with three if statements inside of it, here's what you should do. You should make the first one, and then you should make the inner ones. Like this. Yep, there you go. So anytime you open something, you always close it before you start typing in it. So I would avoid doing this. If you're going to say if true, some people will type it like this. And then they'll type the ending. It filled it automatically for me because of my code editor. But you can envision typing it out like this. And then putting the end one. And then opening it. And typing all their code. And then closing it. And when you do that, you're asking for some serious problems. Because you're going to forget what you're going to forget what you need to do to close all your curly braces and your parentheses. Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about is comments so you can see I use a lot of comments to illustrate things and I just am asking for you guys to be consistent with where you put your comments so for example if I want to describe a variable I could say uh, this is a true or false on whether you like pizza so that's right after the definition of the variable so that's clean very easy to follow what is confusing is if I put this down on the next line I mean, in my opinion, but it's all about convention. So if you want to comment about the previous line, by all means, go for it. But just be consistent, because if I do this, this is a temp variable. See, this one is now commenting on top. This one's commenting on bottom. And then if I were to get rid of some of these spaces, okay, this is confusing now because you don't know if my convention was to comment on top or bottom. And you can see it's in the middle of two variables. So <laughs> you can see how it can get really confusing. So what I always do is I will restrict myself to commenting after on the same line, just like this, or I'll put it above like this. Either one is fine for me. I prefer not to use comments at the end just because I feel like it gets a little lost. 
and you read the code before you read the comment explaining what the code does. This is much more helpful to me where it says, oh, here's what about what's about to come. And this is helpful for me too because I know it's on the same line so I can see it readily there right beside the variable. So those are my versions of best practices. Um, another couple things that you can consider is where you put your parentheses and curly braces. So for example, when if we go back to these if statements, a lot of people will write their if statements like so, where they put the first curly brace on top. That's perfectly valid. Uh, I'm not gonna say you can't do that. It's totally fine. But it does get a little bit more complicated when you're trying to line up parentheses. Because if you look at this if statement, for example, the starting parentheses or the starting curly brace and the ending curly brace are the same level of indentation over. Very easy to see the start and the finish. Whereas this one, it's diagonal, so you have to look at the start of the if and the curly brace, which is just a little bit more harder to see in my opinion. Additionally, it can get a little bit crammed when you have a lot of code. I like to space it out a bit more. Some people prefer to condense their code in as little space as possible, and in that situation, people will often do this, or sometimes they'll even put it in the line like this. <laughs> uh, I guess you can't do that, so we'd have to do <laughs> like that. So all of those are different options. The most important thing is that you stay consistent with whatever you decide to do from the beginning to the end of your project. And if you have a team, it's really, really important that you guys have some kind of standards on how to do this kind of stuff. Otherwise, you're asking for disaster. <laughs> so I know this was a little bit of a ramble, but just wanted to get that off my chest. And now we can move on back to the if statements. Thank you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> Please be sure to subscribe.